Officer of Blood Glucose, providing information to an artificial pancreas algorithm that's then adjusting the dosage of insulin, thereby affecting the glycemia. So that's what feedback control is, sensing something, deciding what to do about it, performing an action. Why would we want to do that? So this is lesson one, or point number one. It's that the purpose of control is to transfer variability or variation from a place where it hurts to a place where it doesn't hurt as much in order to make a human's job easier. So if you think about your car's cruise control and you're driving down the interstate, there's not a lot of cars around, you don't want to be busy focusing on that task of managing your speed at 65 miles an hour. You would love to outsource that task to your cruise control. So you're transferring the variability from the place where it hurts. I don't want to get a ticket or go too fast or not arrive on time. I want to transfer that variability of speed to, I don't care if I use a little more or less gas than you would do that. Same thing with your thermostat. I don't want to have to be throwing logs on the fire or opening up the window to adjust the temperature in the house. I just want it at 70 degrees all the time. Let the automation do that. Same with control systems and autopilots and ultimately with the artificial pancreas. We don't want to have to be worrying about managing our own glycemia and all of that variability. Let the computer take care of that. If you look back to, well, first of all, somebody who doesn't have diabetes, their wonderful endocrine system is already doing that for them. So it's already transferring all of this variability in glucose. Oh, I apologize. This is for Canadians, so this is the ability that's not going to be transferred. That's my bad. So your pancreas is producing all these wonderful hormones that are accepting the variability in the blood glucose. If you look back to the isolation of insulin in the early 1920s by Benjamin Best and how we progressed in diabetes therapy in the intervening 90 years, where it used to be you'd get slow-acting insulin once a day. And if you think about it just from a very pragmatic perspective, you can't transfer that much variability if you only have one chance a day to do it, and it's a very slow insulin. And as we've introduced progressions in diabetes therapy, multiple daily injections and sensor augmented pumps and rapid-acting insulins, we're getting closer and closer to the goal of transferring that maximum amount of variability from the place where it hurts to the place where it doesn't hurt as much. And that's really what the premise of the closed loop artificial pancreas is. Subject to some constraints I'm going to talk about in a minute, how can we as closely as possible mimic the performance of our wonderful natural endocrine system? So if that's what it is, and that's why we'd want to do it, why aren't we done yet? What are the things we're focusing on? I'm going to quickly touch on six areas, and then I'm going to go show you what we're doing in those particular areas. So the first challenge or focus area is that there's many sources of variability. We've already heard about this this morning. How come you're not looking at the context? There's all this other important context information about whether I'm stressed, whether I've exercised, where I am right now, that are all affecting my glycemia. And this is a huge challenge for control engineers because we're not measuring those variables by and large right now. We can only measure a post facto in the blood glucose values. So this is one of the first focus areas, is how do we evaluate different sensors that might be available that can really help us with something called feed-forward control, where we're taking those disturbances and using them in a proactive sense rather than waiting reactively with a feedback control system. But then we also have to balance the cost and the additional burden of maybe having all of these additional sensors strapped to your body. So there's trade-offs involved, and there's going to be trade-offs involved in everything that I talk about. The next focus area is there actually is a fundamental limitation on how much variability you can transfer. If you think back to your car and the cruise control, it can do a pretty good job of maintaining your speed at whatever you set it to, 65 miles an hour. The reason for that is that there isn't a lot of delay in between the time when you press on the gas pedal and the time when you start to see the sensor change. So one of the challenges that we have with the artificial pancreas is the comparative slowness of insulins, the subcutaneous delivery pathway, and some sensor signal processing causes the delay in the system we weren't trying to control to be somewhere between 25 and 40 minutes from the time that you make the change to your insulin 
and the time that you start to see that effect on the set. And you can just imagine if you had 40 minutes of delay uh, between pressing the gas pedal and seeing uh, the effect on speed, it would be very difficult to drive. Go to Volkswagen Bug. Just to give you a sense of this, um, the, other, uh, the other morning, I think it was Tuesday morning, I, I rolled over at uh, around 5 in the morning and noticed that um, on my century, Hayden was drawing a nice straight line. And I thought, I'm going to do a little experiment. I got in trouble for my husband. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I said, I've, I've got this group of people, I, I, they might doubt that there's this delay. So uh, I gave them a two unit bowl. Nope, so nope. I did a meter thing or two. And then I just watched what happened. And uh, sure enough, nothing happened for 25 minutes. And then it started to go down. And this is a situation where this was like a pristine uh, situation, right? Nice and yeah. flat. So it was a very strong signal to detect. You can imagine how much more difficult that would be to tackle just doing the normal block of the A third focus area is the automation of jet. Uh, it, another way of looking at this is which of this variability in glycemia is the most important to transfer to the manipulated variable? And it was somewhat of a surprise to me, being fairly new to this uh, community, that there isn't a consensus in the industry about the relative importance of, uh, uh, of, of variability transfer. So there's all sorts of different metrics are proposed. And basically, this is all about controllers need something to do. You need to tell them what the target is, what the objective is. Uh, we call them loss functions. And there's a whole bunch of them have been proposed. This is basically uh, on the x-axis, the uh, blood glucose value, and on the y-axis, sort of the urgency of getting out of that zone. So you can think of this as a uh, uh, you know, roller coaster where you put a marble uh, at different places on this roller coaster. Where, where is it going to be most aggressive? Where does it really want to get away from? And where is this rest area going to be? So you can see the majority of these curves sort of have a, a low spot at around 120 milligrams per deciliter. And they're much steeper in hypoglycemia reflecting the uh, acute dangers of hypoglycemia versus the chronic dangers and complications of hyperglycemia. Of coming up with a consistent objective measure uh, so that when we start to do all of these analyses and design of uh, artificial pancreas algorithms, how do we judge how they're doing? How do we give them a, a, a score to be able to do these trade offs? The, uh, the next challenge, we uh, challenge or focus area that uh, I've heard a number of people mention today and, and also at dinner is about human factors and, and task allocation. Uh, by some estimates, there's some, somewhere north of a thousand, uh, somewhere around a thousand tasks required to successfully manage type 1 diabetes. And uh, today, oh, all those tasks, the, the, the majority of these tasks are being performed by you. And so the, uh, the challenge is how do we start to partition some of these tasks to computers so that we don't have to work as hard? There are some very important considerations when we do this task partitioning, task allocation. How do we transfer visibility of who's got the ball right now, right? Is the, is the car driving the car or is the human driving the car? So we have these same kind of questions to ask. Unfortunately, there's a great deal of insight from other domains which are further along in the automation journey. You know, cockpits and oil refineries, uh, even driver support uh, in, in automobiles, where we can learn from the hard-won lessons in those domains. Because last I checked, there were humans involved in those things too, right? Monkeys and dogs were um, flying airplanes. Humans were, and the humans are, are fundamentally the same as the humans are doing. And it's really about making sure that we get the humans' tasks that they're good at, and the computers' tasks that 